Appreciate you guys being here now or later. This stream today, I see so many people talking about truck driving because this is mainly going to be for the people that are in trucking, thinking about trucking, thinking about getting back into trucking if you left because you got upset. This stream, you see Scott on the screen. Scott, how do you hear me? I don't hear you fine. I'm okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you for making the time uh, for doing this stream. One of the reasons I want to get Scott on is because in his case, and we're, we're going to kind of go through the, the 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 systems and the strategy he used. He's not even sixty years old yet, and for all practical purposes, he's retired, paid off house, money in the bank, all from truck driving, all from truck driving because he made good moves. And we're going to talk about how he did it, why he did it, and what moves he made. And it wasn't. Probably initially, it wasn't intentional that, hey, I'm looking long term on this, other than he wanted to make sure he didn't make stupid decisions. Is that yeah. a good summation of what this conversation is going to be, Scott? That's exactly the that's exactly the summary I would have thought of eventually. <laughs> okay, well, I, and I've known you now for seven and a half years, man. But I think one of the things like when you told me a month ago that you were kind of, you know, you're just going to stop and retire and just, you know, stop chasing another J-O-B because you left trucking. You got your degree in something totally away from trucking way back in the day. And you're like, you know what? I just want to stop. I, I can stop. Everything's paid off. I own everything I have and I can stop. And then when I get that retirement, the 62, 67 or, or 70 year old retirement from the Social Security, that's just going to be in addition to I don't need it to, to live comfortably now. Is that is that correct? Right. Right. OK, so first and foremost, and you don't need to talk about exactly what the career was. You you were you actually got a college degree way back in the day. Yeah. So I wound up with a bachelor and two associates in uh, aviation fields from the um, I would argue the best aviation school in the country. Um, and now they're so colossally expensive They're, You know, I'm not going to recommend them or not recommend them. I'm glad I went there. It was good to uh, see everything, but um, when I got out of when I got out, aviation had take had taken a. Um, if you remember the go, I, mean, I know you remember the Gulf War, but anyway, the Gulf War recession in the airline industry uh, was pretty was pretty bad. So yeah. jet fuel went from maybe a dollar and a quarter a gal a gallon to four gallons four dollars a gallon for jet fuel. So the aviation industry just came to a grinding halt. And that's exactly when I graduated. And so anyway, so I was, I trained as a pilot, uh, went broke doing that, switched over and trained as an aviation mechanic, worked on that, worked in that field for a little while, long enough to know I like learning it. I do not want to be a mechanic for the next 40 something years. And, you know, so I, I got out of that and uh, got into trucking essentially because I was about to become homeless. And then from there on, every paycheck just confirmed to me, trucking trucking will give me a reliable paycheck as long as I don't screw up. And if I pay attention to what I'm doing, and then I don't throw my money away. So you got to do all of those things. If you just do one or two of them, you may not make it. You know, but that's that would be true about any industry and any job. Yeah. So on the pre-interview, you said time frame wise age wise you were about 24 25 when you got into truck driving yeah i was in my mid 20s maybe 26 maybe um something like that when i got out of uh when i got out of college and and then i worked for a year um after just over a year um this was back before there was gps before there were cell phones when every phone call was made on a landline or a pay phone so things so toward the end of that i'd had just about enough and i went back to aviation for a year or so and realized okay the the economics have not improved and i became almost homeless and i got into trucking four weeks you know within four weeks of leaving my last aviation job i was uh i was in my first truck riding with a trainer so it worked out from there on and i never looked back who did you know in trucking that got you to look that direction from aviation? 
Well, being a kid, being a kids of the 70s, you know, Smokey and the Bandit, and there were TV programs about this uh, truck driver, uh, BJ and the Bear was a show, Moving On was a show. So I'd seen trucking. My dad got into trucking from a long insurance career, and he liked it, and he experimented as company driver and also owner-operator. And so I learned some lessons from him about that, Went him and my brother, and we all went in the truck you know uh in summers when i was in say element toward the end of elementary school maybe middle school something like that so i saw trucking not uh you know before youtube and stuff you didn't know anything about an industry unless you knew somebody in it and so i knew somebody in it and yeah. that was the only way i learned about it and then later on now you can learn a lot about trucking before you ever ever you know go to a cdl school and ask uh or a truck stop and ask any questions so my yeah. dad was in it and i learned i just a I, I cannot i can never thank him enough for all the info he gave me on that was he a driver yeah he was uh he started out with north american van lines general freight he never moved he was never what they call a bed bugger he never moved anybody's home goods but he would move general freight uh in avl uh, the company he worked for, you know, they moved general freight and other things. And so he, he, uh, I believe he bought a truck from them and he went to work and did that for several years and was eventually owner operator with that. So I learned lessons from him as a company driver back in the days of cab overs and, you know, don't tell anybody now, but every truck was manual and it wasn't the end of the world. People could actually drive manual trucks and, so I learned lessons from him on as a company driver and an owner operator, uh, things like that. So it just, you know, I think uh, I think God above, he put people in my life and those people either did things or I bumped into the right people to learn information so I didn't have to make every single possible mistake on my own. And right. it saved, that saved me from going down so many paths that would have just blown up everything, I think. For me, well, that's, one of, that's one of the things I didn't have is I, I had a next door neighbor when I was in high school that was uh, he drove for you. I think UPS at that time. Hell, I don't even know if UPS was around, but it was one of the shipping companies and he was off the chain. He and I had a great time because I was, you know, I was a big partier then. And even though he was in his late 30s, early 40s, we had a great time. And we but we didn't really talk about trucking in the sense of the money and the strategy and all that. Had I had a family member. I would have never gone in the military if I had known about this gig and I could, you know, maybe find a girl to ride with me and be with me because I've always enjoyed the freedom. I've always enjoyed being in different cities. I've always enjoyed the travel, no matter what I've done. Trucking is kind of a summation of all of that. I didn't know any better. Now, you took a different route. You went with the company and you stayed there for for a long time. Yeah, after the uh, after, so I worked for my first company, took a break, came back, worked for my second company. Would have never left that second company because I had my dog by then. My dog was riding with me. They were happy with the dog. Everything was going good. If if I could have frozen a moment in time, I would have stayed with uh, with Goggin Truck Lines until I retired because they were just the greatest people to work for. Uh, they were right across the street from my first company. I was familiar with everything. <laughs> this was back in the days with paper log books and before ELDs. So everything was just, you could work however you wanted to work that, you know, when I was there. And then they got bought out by an old, Domin by old Dominion Freight Lines, which is an excellent company. But when yeah. Old Dominion bought out uh, um, Goggin Truck Lines, they made a lot of changes, including no more pets. And so that got me to look around. Then my third company was the company Avert Express that I stayed with for 18 years. And I just, I can't say enough good things about Avert Express, but I will caution everybody. Avert Express has a ton of driving jobs, different driving jobs. The only driving job I had with Avert Express was working on their Nissan account in uh, Tennessee. So I don't, I never had to run over the road. I never, you know, so I didn't uh, run into some other issues you might get if you work for them in a different place. But as far as having managers that think you're a human and treat you a human, I don't think you can get a better company than Avert Express. And I tried my hardest to find one of the 800 jobs that they had in the company to move on when I just before I moved on from them because I really 
Uh, I financially, uh, management wise, I just could not pick a better place to be. So I'm kind of partial to them, you know, but yeah, they you, may not be your cup of tea if, you know, if you're doing something else. Well, and you said, you said on the pre-interview, you only moved on because they reduced the almost to just one day off a week. It was a six day, you know, you had to work six days a week where initially you were getting right. a full 34 and you weren't rushed about even that. And then it began uh, changing and changing. You're like, you know what? I need, I need a full, I need more than just one 24 hour period off. Right. And that wasn't really up to the company. See on that account, we were off when the factory wasn't working because we weren't in support of one factory. So in the summer, I had a guaranteed two weeks off around Christmas. I had a guaranteed two weeks off at Thanksgiving. I had guaranteed um, half a week off or more or less a week. So I had Everything was as regular as a regular nine to five job working there, but it was a driving job. And so everything was working out good. It didn't pay the most in the world. When I looked around, I was never, I was always making less money than I could have made if I went someplace else. But the numbers I was hearing where people were making more money is they were doing over the road. And so they might not be home. Well, I was home every night. I was home every night. I knew within 30 minutes when I was going to be home. I mean, I was like a robot. I went to work at the same time, woke up at the same time, ate meals at the same time. I was walking on my treadmill an hour before work, an hour after work. So I had, and and I had my weekends off. And then when the factory stepped up production to six days, I stuck with it as long as I could. I never liked it, but eventually, instead of just staying there till I blew up every relationship and burned them, you know, and emotionally burned the place down. You know, I decided to move on because I had a perfectly clean record. I could not be a more valuable new hire to another company than I was right then. And I really took advantage of that. And um, it really worked out for me. Well, and I want to I want to dive a little bit into that because that's let's unpack that. Um, number one. Staying with the, with the company, staying with the job as long as you possibly can while you're banking cash. Right. Number, number two, even when you were doing and, you you know, you were doing really well when you drove with us up in up in Idaho, when you were doing really well, you never just spent your money frivolously. You didn't go out and buy the, the new Dodge Scat Pack, you know, car. You, you, oh, didn't, no. you weren't that guy. And you pay, you bought a house and paid it off as quick as you could. Yes. Right. right. You, know, you were building so, you, were, you were building lifetime equity. So many people, especially younger, but again, you had a father that kind of guided you into the business. Um, you you well, had a lot. You had a lot on your side. Go ahead. You're saying something. Yeah. So my dad didn't really guide me into the business. Um, so what he got into it because he had been at a nine to five job, being a manager of particular employees that eventually just got to him, and he was, he he made a decision. I've got to get out of here, or I'm going to have, you know, problems. And so he got into trucking because there was a cultural thing at the time uh, back in the mid, late seventies, early eighties, you know, and it worked out for him. He got into it. He had people around him. So he was able to step into an awesome position and kept making awesome decisions because of his support into better and better positions. And I resisted that at all costs because of certain things in the family the last thing I ever wanted at that time, if you'd have told me I could make a million dollars a month um, cutting grass for the city or the state, I would have said, I am not taking that kind of job. I don't care what it pays. And so that's why I resisted trucking as long as possible till I almost became homeless. And then when I got into it, I saw whatever job you have, there's certain aspects of it that are controlled only by the job and they're never going to be something else. You're never going to be before YouTube. You could never be rich and famous cutting grass for the city. If fame was a big part of your life, which it wasn't for me. So, so when I got into trucking, when I had no other options and it did not take me long at all to realize trucking is, has certain flexibility in certain aspects of it that this job happened to fit me perfectly. I'm introverted. Um, I can, you know, hopefully I'll never have neighbors, you know, on TV saying, oh, well, he was always nice and quiet, but we didn't know anything about him. But, you know, I could go, I'm just not an intro. I'm just not a extroverted person. I don't have to have a lot of social stuff. 
if you're one of those people, trucking is awesome for you because you're always going. You know, you're always, I joke and say, I got 3 million miles in my career. And in psychologically, one reason it works so well for me is it's 3 million miles of driving away from problem people and people with problems. You well, know, it's so it's miles. just. It's 3 million miles with your favorite person, you. Exactly. I mean, I'm not my favorite person. My dog was, you know, my dog was, I would say it was pretty close to that. But, you know, if you, now, if you're a, if you're a highly, um, if you're a highly relationship driven and you're highly um, extroverted and you've got to be around, when I'm around people, after about 15 minutes, my batteries just start draining. And yeah. then eventually when my batteries get low, then my social skills, which aren't they great, they start going away. And eventually I just, you know, I, I'll have problems where if you're an extroverted, if you're alone, being alone, your batteries drain. And if you're not around people, you just become a wreck where that's, you know, my plan is to live off grid and, you know, metaphorically speaking and joking is I'll just, uh, you know, I'll shoot at the trespassers. That's, that's about all the social interaction I'm pretty sure I'll need. You know, I don't want to harm anybody. I understand. But trespassers, you know, you never know what trespassers are. Well, you know, you say introverted, extroverted, all that. I get that. And I, and most people understand those terms. I would just say people centered because I'm not, right. I didn't realize until later in life, I'm not super people centered. And I don't like to use the term extra, introverted because I can be very extroverted, but it's a switch that I flip. It's not something I walk around with on a constant basis. But if I don't, if I want to disappear and I don't want to be seen, I can do that too. And I'm, I'm very good either way. I don't need people to validate me, which yeah. is where trucking becomes so comfortable. And then when I found her, I don't know that I'd have been with a woman that didn't want to be in the truck. I don't know that I would ever do that again if she happened to you know, pass away. I don't know that I want to be in the truck with anybody unless it's a woman that's my girl mm. and we can do this because I don't need anybody else. And we have yeah. a dog. Like you said, our dog is a great addition oh to everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but I'd say people centered. It's not so much introverted because I've been around you and I'm not trying to argue with who you say you are and are not. Mm. You're, you're, you're people, extra people sensitive or centered when you need to be, but you can turn it off like that and you can go back to being, you know, in the truck. Yeah. With your car. And, you know, even for me, most people who know me through the years would say I'm extremely extroverted. Okay. Although I personally, love to just disappear and not really deal with anyone. Uh, I can switch it on if I need to and voila, you know, but I prefer not to, you know, and so yeah. um, it, and also as you get on in later in life, you know what your priorities are with relationships Absolutely. that you have and where your time and your energy goes, which can be uh, towards people or not, you know. So. Yeah, and, back, yeah. and back to how you're able to stop working before you're even 60 years old, you've made good decisions, you didn't get married to the wrong person. I didn't understand that, Scott. Like, I will tell you that in my first relationship, you know, she got pregnant. We got married. All You know, all the all the typical cliche things, you know, I'm like, well, yep. I got to do the right thing and marry her now and blah, blah, blah. Yep. And I had anybody. I didn't have a father that was in my ear giving me guidance. I had to kind of figure stuff out on my own. I would have probably not made that same decision, you know, had I been guided differently. Because to me, like, okay, she's pregnant, got to get married. I would have come in this business, paid for the child, you know, tried to be in the child's life, gone about living. But I would have been in this business trying to find a girl to jump in the truck with me. And, oh. and really, because my first wife wouldn't have wanted to do this gig. She wouldn't have. Right. I don't think she could have either, not in the sense of she just didn't have any interest, you know, as like yeah. zero. And she was very people centered, where I was totally 180 out from that. This has made all the difference, but you didn't get married. You didn't get married to the wrong person who took half your stuff once or twice like I did. Right. And, and then you stayed at the same gig for 18 years and you stack your cash. You use their where they matched you with the 401k, right? You use that. With yeah, I was uh, pretty aggressive. I was taking out, um, I think uh, at the end, I was taking out 15% of my pay and every year um, now now, once you enroll in a 401k, if you don't do anything, they increase the percentage 1% every year unless you stop that. 
you can uh, you can opt you can uh, make the choice to leave to stay put at your current percentage but now uh, you automatically get enrolled in a 401k unless you do something which when I started you had to opt in and then uh, the rules eventually change and once you're contributing every year it bumps up by a percentage unless you do something so um, but I had uh, I listened to a lot of experts or people that I thought were experts I'm kind of a um, I'm I'm always seeking knowledge. I, if I won the lottery, what I would do is probably find a place um, and go to school every day until I got bored with that because it doesn't matter to me what the subject is. Learning something is exciting to me as water skiing or snow skiing or traveling is to other people. So I'm always um, I'm always interested in learning, and I had some really good people give me information on the radio back in the day and then eventually podcast things like that so i you know i if i'd have made all the right decisions which i didn't i would have been better off but i wound up because of early family issues not making the key the <laughs> common the common landmines that blow up uh, your your finances early and often i never made those because i saw what people dealing with that um, had to, what their life was like and how much stress it cost. And I'm kind of sensitive to that kind of thing. And it's like, well, I would rather sit in a closet than go through all of that again, because at well, least when you're sitting in a closet, you're not worried about, you know, the earth, earth opening up and being swallowed because you just don't know what's about to happen. Now, every time you go to the mailbox, oh my gosh, is this the letter that's going to ruin my life for the next 10 years? And so I, it's way easy for me to do without than it is to take a chance that risk getting into that uh, kind of cycle. Well, and that's kind of, you know, we're going to probably end up with this too, man. Um, the At the end of the day with everything you've done to get to where you are financially, yeah, you've, you've had women in your life, but it just didn't work out. It was, you said, you said in the pre-interview, it was kind of a mutual decision on both people's parts with whoever was in your life. Like, this isn't going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work no harm, no foul, but you also didn't make the wrong decision and get with them because you were lonely or they were lonely and you were trying to save them. Right. You're like, you're like, no, this is, this is, this isn't working, but I like my, I love my dog, you know? Yeah. And well, uh, they were, they were good people and that they didn't, you know, they didn't do certain things that would have tried to force the issue, things like that. So, you know, like I say is I didn't make all the right decisions, but things worked out well enough for me. And since you don't know what would have happened if you'd made alternate decisions, you always have a guess, but you have no idea. You know, each one of those guesses, they could have all gone wrong, and then I wouldn't be where I'm at now. So instead of worrying about what might have been things like that, I just, you know, it, it, it was what it was, and I'm, you know, I'm, I can live with that, no problem. Well, it only takes one. You could have, you could have been married 25 years, and she divorces <laughs> you and takes all, you know, half your stuff, if not all your stuff. And you're spinning and you're 55, 45, you know, 60 years old going, what do I do now? Because now I got to I got to start yeah. back with, you know, mm -hmm. I, I spent all the because it's very tough when you're more mature to gear down again and get back in the groove, especially when you start getting to 50, 60 years old. It's yeah. not easy to, re to reinvent yourself again. I speak from experience. And uh, so you just made some good moves. The reason I wanted to do this stream with you, Scott, yeah. and I'm doing you now for seven and a half years. Um, number one, congratulations on being in a position financially where yeah. you can stop. You have a paid off house. Everything yeah. in your, your car is paid off. Everything you have is paid off. Um, do you still have a dog? Uh, no, she passed away and I'm waiting uh, since where I'm at now is kind of where family is at. And then once things get sorted out here, um, my mom took real good care of me when after the divorce and she went through a lot of financial issues and, you know, if she hadn't have been such a high quality person, you know, my life as a little kid would have just been, uh, ter could have been terrible. And so she did what she had to, to make sure our life was good. And so I don't really want to, uh, leave her until things, you know, until she's all set. And then once that happens and I go off to my new place, then I'll, I'll have dogs then. Yeah. I'll well, the reason I brought that up is because one of the things, and I said this during the pre-interview, You've never talked to me one time in the seven and a half years, whenever we've called each other and spoken about whatever it was, 
You've never called all mule lipped and sad about something and oh, woe is me. And I'm going to tell everybody out there that's watching this now or later. Is trucking a good gig? No, it's a horrible gig if you have the wrong personality for it. Right. It's also a horrible gig if you're a complainer. It's a horrible gig if it's always somebody else's fault. It's a horrible gig if you take no ownership of anything in your life. It's a horrible gig if your <coughs> significant other doesn't like you being gone. Oh, we lost him. We lost him. We lost him. Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna wait for him to come back on. His phone must have died. That's the purpose of the stream. Everything in your life is your fault. Everything that you're succeeding with is also your mm -hmm. success. Mm -hmm. You know, and quit blaming somebody else. Quit blaming the job. Quit, quit blaming the significant other. Quit blaming anything other than you made some wrong moves. And you're exactly where you are because you've made some wrong moves. Could you have gotten sick and didn't see that coming? That wasn't really your choice. Yeah, I get that. But if Wait, it was, I can add to that, though. Yeah. I can add to that. Hey, just uh, two sentences. Basically, when I lost everything and went through everything that I went through, um, all I can say is that even in that moment, it wasn't so and so who made that decision for me. It's so and so. I had a realization, and I could tell the story about it, actually, it was involving us and stuff. But I had the realization that I needed to make those decisions because at the end of the day, wherever I ended up, even after the tragedy that happened to me, it was my, on me and it was my decision to make those uh, best moves possible in the situation I was at. And it did. It was wonderful. So, well, I would just tell all you guys trucking is still, even right now, is the money the greatest? No. No, but you can live out of your truck. Mm. We did more in 19 months. Yeah, we did more in 19 months. Now it was during during the the pandemic, and you know money was good on a lot of a lot of loads. Amazon was crazy good, but we just lived out of the truck for 19 months. Like she jumped in the truck, and we never jumped out. Mm -hmm. We other than a hotel here and there, we stayed in the truck and just drove for 19 months. But it wasn't like I was having to give anything up because I was with her. And I was either in the bunk or she was in the bunk. We mm -hmm. didn't have Chewy at that point, but she loved the business, which made me enjoy the business better. Here he, he's he back. Is. He's back. The phone was overheating or something. That's what I figured. That's what I figured. Um, and we're about to wrap it up, Scott. I was kind of I was kind of summarizing for people, but that's one of the things, man. Is that you? Like you've never been mule lipped about stuff. And I, I take listen. Everything I've done in my life, I was there for all of it, good or bad. So who's responsible? Me. It doesn't mean that I didn't have help like this last, you know, three and a half years from her. No, it doesn't mean I didn't have help, but I'm completely at fault and I'm completely to cheer on for everything in my life because I've been there for all of it. Mm -hmm. And I've reinvented myself four times, always done well. And we've done very well since you and I have been yeah. together. Very, very, well. very well. Yeah. But it's also taken us living the lifestyle that we've lived and going about certain things and not, you know, blowing money. And I mean, even for me, I, I didn't make a lot of money. I made like bare, less than minimum wage. Before you got into trucking. Before I got into trucking. I was only like 30% of our income. I was like 15 bucks an hour. I get into trucking at the height of trucking and I'm seeing all that money. I didn't even look at the bank accounts. I just thought this is a gig I enjoy. This is good money. And let's just keep on moving forward. Let's just keep doing this thing and, and putting the money to a side and keep living this lifestyle because it would be very easily for someone in my shoes to see that money and then go out oh, and go crazy like you win the lottery and blow it all. Oh, now I've never had this, so I'm going to buy that. I've never had that. I want to go get a new car. And we could have done that, or I could, you know. She could have. I could have done and that. And not but, told me about it. <laughs> but, but I didn't. I didn't. I didn't even look at the bank accounts. I just thought this is a gig I enjoy. It pays well. Let's just keep moving forward. I'll put my head up and have a look at the bank maybe in a year's time, you know, and just. But it's the way we lived our lives and went about how we did it to make and get to the place we're at, you know, only 19 months. So. Because you've done very well, Scott. You've done very well. You're very low key. You're not a flashy guy. I don't care if you're driving a Mercedes or a Jaguar or whatever you're driving a Chevy. I don't know. You're, you're just a very you're a very steady, pragmatic guy. And that served you well financially. Yeah. Even though some people need more risk, especially the people that come from an abusive background, like they need more excitement in their life. It's kind of built into their DNA at this point. But you're just very you're very pragmatic and very steady. And well, here you are, you're retired. And then the money from Social Security is going to be in addition to. That's a great yeah. place to be. I got my adventure out of the way early, you know, flying airplanes and stuff. And I did things that I shouldn't have and got away with things there. And, you know, 
first of all, I want to make sure that I say this before the connection drops or anything is y'all are perfectly matched together. And so that works out the best. Y'all have, y'all have the truck and life hack that maybe not everybody can get, or maybe they can, I don't know. I'm, I'm not the expert on relationships is you've got the person that you care about most in the truck with you. So that removes so much potential conflict of somebody being at home and somebody being on the ro on the road. So that it's just works out. So it's been a game changer. And then hurricane being the type of person that she is, she, you know, she is a high quality person and she's a good match for you. And I assume she's very tolerant because she puts up with you, Red. But uh, <laughs> so uh, but you know he puts up with me too. So oh, she's <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I didn't even see that elbow coming, Scott. That's very good jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> I was raised by a single mom, so I have just enough uh, verbal skills to sneak up on somebody and cut their throat. And uh, <laughs> well, I think I think we've covered the purpose of the stream, man. Is that trucking is still a good gig? If you can jump in a truck and live even single, live out of the truck, sleep in the truck, drive, make your money, stack your cash, don't get crazy. And again, like you said, you began doing it early. You began doing it early and just left the money alone and let it keep on yeah. building. You bought a house. How fast? <coughs> how fast did you pay your house off? Oh. <coughs> uh, uh uh, that was a few years ago. I don't really remember. My, it just got to uh, the balance on my house was low enough that I wasn't even, it was so low that I couldn't even reef. So I, I accidentally or fortuitously, or, you know, God sent me a message, but anyway, so I was refinanced it when the interest rates were down in the threes. <clears throat> and then uh, I get a notice saying, Hey, your balance is only this. Would you like to refinance, which is in the interest of the, people that wanted to finance it. And then the next year I got noticed saying your balance is only this and now it's too small. Nobody's essentially nobody's going to refi would refinance. So I was like, well, why don't I just pay it off? That would be fine too, because then no matter what happens, you know, no matter what happens, they can't come take the house from you as long as you pay your property taxes, which ours here are pretty, are pretty low. So that's not a problem. Well, I would so, tell everybody watching the stream, if you're in trucking or getting in trucking, stack as much as you can stack. If you have a house, get it paid off as quick as you can. If you don't have a house, set the money aside, get ready. These guys that, that like, nah, I, should, I shouldn't go down that path because that's a whole nother stream. I know how to buy homes. Like we've, we've bought three, mm -hmm. bought three homes since we've been together mm -hmm. and we've paid all of them with cash up front. We've had to do some rehab on every single one of them except for the one we're in now and you just can't beat that because you walk into instant equity if you're not worried about doing some yeah. rehab and they're all good and they're all great neighborhoods next to water which is always a, a plus but trucking has done that for 19 months yes. with her trucking has yes. done that you know i could have done it in my previous gigs but i didn't <laughs> like having to go in and, and thank people for coming to work i didn't like having to coddle people whose feelings were hurt because whatever happened at the house, they want to come in, they want to dump on you at work. I didn't enjoy that. I, I wasn't that guy. Some people right. are. I'm not that guy. So I'm proud of you, man. And I'm, I, it's been it's been good watching you get to this point because when you I told me you're done working, I'm like, you're yeah. done working already? Like you, you don't even need SSI? And you're like, no, I'm yeah. good. I, that's just going to be an addition too. The one warning that I would add to everything that you say and I agree with is – I don't think it's for somebody who's considering getting into trucking. Um, I don't think you can just assume you go with any company and do whatever work that they have and everything will work out. You need to get my recommendation. I'm pretty uh, busy online. My recommendation to everybody is you never work at a trucking company until you have talked to people currently working at that trucking company working on the account that you want to do maybe in an emergency you're getting hired into an account that they don't have a lot of people at and so you only talk to somebody who works at abc trucking for example and not their dedicated this account but you can't i would never recommend that you just go online work for the first people that say we'll hire you and then assume 
the money's going to start rolling in because maybe it will, maybe it won't. So you want to walk into the right opportunity, not just whatever opportunity someone drops in your lap. Absolutely. That would, and it's the same theme that you've had through this whole conversation is that you've done your research. You know, you haven't absolutely. just listened. You just haven't listened to blah, 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 or this person in your life or that person in life. You've you've researched and you've listened to people, but you've done your own research and made your own decisions in everything that you've done to get you to this place, yeah. including the trucking Absolutely. Industry. Every company will sound like they are the best company to work for. Their websites will all promise everything in the world. <laughs> well, it doesn't take but 15 minutes, you know, to put up a website. And let's assume the information on the website is accurate. It could be out of date. You just don't know. Where the people who are getting a paycheck last week, they know about what's going on last week at least. That's much more recent. So um, I see a lot of new guys just grabbing whatever company, hires them first, and then they and then they complain, well, wait a minute, this wasn't right, that wasn't right. And you know, I've I do have I do have the spiritual gift of depression at times. I just don't I don't talk to people generally when when that's going on because because all I'll do is repeat my tale of woe and then at the end of it, if they're not an expert in whatever would solve my problem, I've just <coughs> wasted their time, I've wasted my time and it it doesn't get anywhere. So, you know, I I'm not a I'm not a uh, it, it visit, you know, the black Winston Churchill calls it the black dog of depression. It visits me from time to time also, but talking about it isn't going to solve it. So what you need to do is find what is the solution and go toward that. Yeah. Well, listen, brother, that's a lot of good information on the stream. I would tell everybody again, look yourself in the mirror and every problem in your life you created. Every good thing in your life you created. You might have had some help, but you were right there. And you got if you start living life that way, it's amazing how much better things tend to get where you take ownership of things and quit complaining. I can't stand being around complainers. I can't stand being around whiners. I can't stand being around any of that. And I, I, I get them out of my life even quicker now. I didn't used to get them out of my life too quick younger, but I get them out of, out of my life quick now. And I've never heard you do that. But you've also, again, where you are, there's people watching this stream now, Scott, or watching it later. They're your age or older, and they're having to go to two jobs to make ends meet. Right. Where you've, you began planning on all this, you know, 20 some years ago, 30 years ago, and it's all worked out pretty well. You, you know? can retire with a million dollars if you worked your whole life as a janitor at an elementary school. Yeah. That's true. Uh, it's your spending that controls the finances more than the, your income. That exactly. almost always is the truth. But, you know, <clears throat> Um, I'm not the expert. I just, uh, you know, it worked out for me and, you know, it, I, well, I, I saw a few things and I, but I learned a lot from other people. Well, that's why I wanted to get you on, man, because the stories like you have are out there, but so many people hear all the negative stuff and that's all they think trucking is or whatever job they're doing. And that's all life is, man. Life is exactly what you make it. Go look mm -hmm. in the mirror and then look at your life and go, you know what? But most people won't. Cause when you, when you blame yourself, for everything that goes bad, which you need to take ownership, shouldn't say blame, take ownership for you and then praise yourself for the things going good, even though you might've had some help, all of a sudden things clear up, man. So I wanna thank you again for your time today, brother. Uh, thank you, Red and up. Hurricane both. Okay, will you be good? Now, where are you moving to when you, when you do, when your mom's settled into her afterlife, where are you planning on moving? Um, well, there's cheap land out west, and so I'm fairly certain that I'm going to be in one of those places. I'm Scottish by heritage, and so if uh, if I wound up buying land that was more expensive than you know than it had to be, I don't think my ancestors. I think my ancestors might come visit me. So um, so it's going to be out west, uh, probably probably somewhere in Wyoming, or yeah. if, I'm not sure if the FBI is listening. Maybe it's going to be in Mexico. Could be right, in Mexico. Right, right. Could be in Mexico. <laughs> All right, brother, listen, have a great weekend coming up, man, and I appreciate the time. Thank you, too, both of you. Thank you. God bless. God bless.